I am pleased to welcome Mary Lou Canode. <laughs> Great, thank you everyone for coming today. And um, boy, anything I say is gonna be uh, a little less um, firm than what you said, but I think that's really good to get everybody here. One of the things that I say to students is that you have to see as much art as you possibly can. If you're not seeing it, you can't possibly make decisions for yourself. But I'd like to start my le lectures off with this work by Yukinori Yanagi, who's a Japanese artist. And he did a, he's quite known for this series of work. So you can see he's got these fake flags um, and mounted on a wall. And when you do see images that are a little bit fuzzy, the, it's because I took them, so I apologize about my you know, camera's capacity. Um, but, but you can see that there are these you know, kind of made up flags. It's really about globalization. <coughs> but what, what I love about this piece is actually an enormous ant farm. So you can see these are actually ants that have kind of gone back and forth and carried information back and forth between the different flags. And I think that he's, um, really this work is kind of emblematic of the idea that content, you know, goes across boundaries. It always has. We've always been a global, it, from time immemorial, humans have been global. It's just accelerated in recent times. But it's true for art, artistic practice, too. So um, with the teaching that I'm doing up at UMSL right now, I'm really forcing them to think more broadly. You know, they're, they're reviewing magazines, not from the United States, not from this region, but from other parts of the world. Because it's really interesting. The rest of the world is thinking globally. And and you're, you've got the advantage in your generation where you have access to a lot more of this kind of information and, and resources than, than uh, other generations have had. So um, I've been at Laumeyer now a year, and it's, um, I've spent a lot of time reading and thinking and talking to staff and, and people involved with Laumeyer. Um, we're embarking on a five-year series of shows that we're calling Archaeology of Place that um, our activity commissioning people will have to do with some topic of relevance to Laumeyer. So next summer, we're doing a show called Dog Days of Summer. Um, we are doing a first ever visitor survey, and it turns out about 25% of our audience comes with their dog. So dogs are technically 25% of our audience. <laughs> So I had met this really, really interesting Finnish artist about two years ago um, when I was in Helsinki. And she has worked with animals in the past, where she's looking at our, our reactions to animals, the way that we use animals, the way that they impact us, the way they modify, the way they modify our, our behavior. And so she is designing a trail from the dog's perspective. So we're working with a vet and an animal trainer. And so she's going to be designing a series of experiences in a sculptural way that will engage the dog. And we're also going to be, um, you know, because this is a permanent part of our report, permanent part of our, our audience, um, really integrating um, these discussions that we're having into our educational programming with the docents, with the kids' programs, with the adult programs. Um, and we're just trying to figure out different ways in which we can sort of um, encourage this, this um, relationship, you know, because, you know, first there was nature, then there was Native Americans, then settler culture, all these layers of interaction. How, what impact has it had? How, how has St. Louis ended up the way that it is? We're unique from a lot of other parts of the country. You know, this is just one way for us to start. And look at that human nature interface. And this is a, a piece she did with a reindeer. Um, and so she mounted a camera on the reindeer's head. Um, I'm working with um, the Longview House and Gardens in New Orleans to do a series of projects under the rubric, The River Between Us. And we want to connect um, our two historic cities, reconnect our two historic cities along the uh, Mississippi and look at some of the cultural and historical things that have formed our two cities. Um, this is an artist from, from Chicago named Bernard Williams. And he's, I think, he's African American, part Cherokee, part, part, you know, white American. So he's got this really varied background, and he makes these um, sort of um, hieroglyphic works where he's retelling the history of America or different histories of, you know, of our culture. And so he takes signs and symbols from different things, different stories, and sort of recombines them in a really interesting way. He's actually in New Orleans on a residency right now, so we'll be, be bringing him in fairly soon. So again, the river between us is a chance for us to broaden our partnerships within the community. So we went out to Cahokia Mounds last week. 
um, when Joe Baker was in town, he's the director of Longview. Um, we've been talking to the Missouri History Museum. Um, they're very interested in working with us. Bob Archibald is a really smart guy, and he's interested in working with us. So we're really trying to figure out ways in which we can partner with people who have incredible resources and, and expertise that we don't have, um, but allowing artists the opportunity to really invest in some in some thinking so that anything that they come up with is going to be really specific to, to Landwire. Um, <clears throat> I'm also doing a project called Camp Out. So we have a park and most people consider camping a luxury where you have your fancy sleeping bag and your fancy tent and your fancy equipment. Um, however, for most people on Earth, camping out is not a choice. So the people in Haiti are not happy about camping out. The homeless aren't that happy about camping out. Most people aren't happy about it. It has to do with sort of their social um, and their political situation. So with Camp Out, we're going to be putting into the landscape um, different kinds of architectural forms that will address the built environment and the kinds of homes that we build in, in the landscape. And this is the work of um, an artist named uh, Michael Rakowitz. He teaches at Northwestern. And he works with homeless, the homeless in Chicago to build site-specific homes for them. So this is a homeless shelter where the homeless person has set up next to a building and they're getting the heat exhaust from the laundry room in the basement of this building in Chicago. So he's going to be coming out and, and working with some people in the community. We've got some other kinds of um, things that we're going to be doing as well. Um, my, my intention is that some of these buildings are actually habitable and that people can rent them for a night stay like you do in a, you know, uh, in a national park. And that Michael wants to lead campfire discussions about things. So we'll have all kinds of activities out in the park at night. And then finally, I'm working on a project called Mound City. Not sure what the show means quite yet, but it's such a historical phrase. It's something that we want to do something with. This is a, a work by an artist named Brad Kalhammer. Um, he's Native American, but was adopted out um, under the American government's forced adoption uh, policies up until the 70s. So he actually grew up <clears throat> in northern Wisconsin. And he's made a totem pole. This is actually a bronze totem pole. But you can sort of see a little bit of the detail. I actually cast it out of cardboard. So he's actually going back to some sort of, you know, um, indigenous imagery and then casting it in contemporary material. So anyway, and that actually is my last image.